Is it time for you to hire a virtual executive assistant for your interior design firm? What the hell can they even do for us? Where do we even begin? Stay tuned and find out. Hey kids, and welcome to Designed by Wingnut Social. I'm your host, Darla Jethro Powell, interior decorator and Wingnut Grand High Poobah extraordinaire of Wingnut Social, a digital marketing agency for the interior design realm, my ladies and my lords. <laughs> Today's guest, Gina Kotner of Athena Virtual Executive Assistance, really opened my eyes in our conversation together on what you can expect and achieve with a virtual assistant. And I have to tell you, I was really limited in my thinking of what is possible. Gina and I had a very transparent conversation about who needs one, who doesn't need one, what to look for, how much you can expect to invest. Should you go offshore? Should you stay in the U.S.? A lot of really, really good answers were had, were to be had, <laughs> were, were discovered in this research <laughs> on executive assistance. I am losing my goddamn mind. But before I get into my conversation with Gina, about why you need a virtual assistant, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't, who knows, who am I to say, right? Did you guys know that our very first flagship course, Instagram for interior designers is selling like hotcakes, like McDonald's big breakfast hotcakes with the sausage. That's, that's my go-to breakfast. <laughs> that's why I'm so healthy. That's why I have these full cheeks. Instagram for Interior Designers, our online on-demand course, is going to walk you through on how to develop a strategy and implement it for your interior design firm in the digital realm so your ideal client can actually see you. So you can show up on social, they can see what you're all about, hire you, pay you money, be happy, be a testimonial, and you can live happily ever after. Head on over to wingnutsocial.com, check out Wingnut Academy, and that is Instagram for Interior Designers. Lifetime access, as long as this planet is rotating and we're in business and that's online, you have access to that forever and the Facebook group, wingnutsocial.com. All right, guys, before we get into my conversation with Gina Kotner, here is all about her. Gina is the founder and CEO of Athena Executive Services, a firm that pairs virtual executive assistants around the United States with swamped and successful entrepreneurs and executives. That's us, folks. Her team of high caliber executive assistants work part time from home, taking many tasks and projects off the plates of successful people, leaving them free to spend their time where they are needed most. And that is rainmaking. That's making the money. Why are we answering our email? <laughs> Get up on my soapbox. And uh, spoiler alert, I still answer my emails. All right, guys, help me in welcoming Gina Kotner to the show. Hey there, Gina Kotner. Welcome to the show. How the hell are you? Thanks, Darla. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you. It's been a hot minute since we've talked about this subject, having a, a virtual assistant or hiring a, a virtual executive assistant. And it's kind of, it kind of burns my brain a little bit because it's hard for me to wrap my head around having an executive assistant that I can't really just see in my three-dimensional space. Right. So I'm sure we're going to talk about some of those barriers to entry there and uh, your expert advice on why a virtual executive assistant is going to be the, the way to go for most small business owners. Are you game to dig in? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All righty, cool. So Gina, before we dive in, just tell us a little bit about what makes you an expert on this subject and we'll get going. Yes, I'm the founder and CEO of Athena Executive Services. And that'll we are, uh, yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. So it is a vast, crazy world, this VA world, virtual assistant world. And we are kind of in a niche up over here on the top shelf of that world. And it is mm -hmm. wild and unregulated and crazy. And um, yeah, we've learned a lot over the years. One of the biggest uh, pieces of advice I had for my business was Gay Hendricks saying, delegate outside the scope of your genius. And my second hire is usually, has usually been for my businesses, for my interior design firm and my podcast is kind of a executive assistant kind of you know, manager kind of type person. And I think it's a very important hire, but I've always had them physically live carbon-based human beings, you know, in my business. So why should someone who is branching out or scaling up who needs that help, why should we start looking into a virtual situation instead? Help me wrap my mind around that. Yeah. Oddly enough, I, I won't 
probably try to convince you too much about that okay. because it really is, um, you know, we, we opened before the pandemic, before people had to go online. And I wrestled with mm -hmm. that. Like, do sure. I try to convert the people who say, but wait, I want Sally Sue down the hallway that I can say, hey, can you go pick up the Jackson file and bring it here? Mm -hmm. And I used to put a little effort into like, well, come on, like, this is welcome to like the modern world and here's what else is possible. And then I kind of stopped because I thought, you know, everybody's management style is what it is. So it's, it's, it's like, if, if you're game for it, if you're curious, if you're like, what is this? How could this work? Wait, okay. I don't have to pay for office space for them. And maybe mm -hmm. I'm not paying for equipment for them. And I have the selection of the whole entire country or the whole entire world to choose from. Hmm. And maybe I am on the West Coast and maybe it could be fun to have an EA on the East Coast who's like working on my inbox before I even get out of bed. Oh, nice. You know, there's a lot of options, but mm. I learning to delegate and learning to manage remotely is another skill set, too, that yeah. not everybody has. But if you get a strong EA who's virtual, they'll train you. You know, they will come with their own bag of tricks and probably some softwares that say they say, OK, hey, here's how we could, would, should work together. So, you know, there is most times there's a lot of cost savings to it, but you do mm -hmm. need to look and see if you're not somebody who wants to text and email and, you know, work remotely. And that feels too weird to you. Mm -hmm. I frankly, I wouldn't fight it. Yeah, you're right. You might not be ready for it, or maybe that's just not your style of management, leadership, or your business. I will say, if you're younger in the game and you're not looking at selling your business within the next five or 10 years, that might be something you want to acclimate to because that is where it's going. To your point, the Jackson or Johnson file, it can live in Google Drive or live in Dropbox, right? So uh, that is something you want to wrap your head around for longevity. And it definitely is a cost saver. To have someone that's not a, because I, I imagine they're not like W-4 employees, right? They're contract. Okay. You're, she's nodding her head. Right. <laughs> Sorry, sorry right. I forget. And, this is audio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can, but you could have everything, right? You can get your W-2 employee there in your office. Mm -hmm. You could mm -hmm. hire a firm like me. Now I'm just a vendor, right? I'm just like the plumber coming in or somebody else. Sure. So then, you know, you're just hiring a service. Yeah. yeah. And then we deal in the industry. There are contractors, there are employees. There's a whole, again, it's the wild, wild west. Right. So, okay. So let's talk about the wild, wild west. So I've had uh, peers in the industry and professionals who've uh, maybe they've had a course or something like, ah, my virtual assistant, she's in South America and I can't, you know, we're in a different time zone and I can't get this fixed. It wasn't done quite correctly. And there was a little bit of a, a miscommunication and systems and processes and software issues in there. How do we, how do we begin to even look at something that's going to not be more of a headache than it's worth working virtually? Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> This podcast is not meant to be four hours, Gina. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> choose your words wisely. So first of all, I'd just say choose wisely, right? Mm -hmm. So they're in the, 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 the brief 30 seconds on the 411 on the industry is, yes, there is a whole overseas component. It's going to yeah. be cheaper and it's going to come with a unique set of challenges. It may be worth it if you have tasks to turn over, or maybe you're going to give all of your social media to somebody in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's going to work, but there are going to be cultural issues, language issues, time zone issues, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Then you For have sure. U.S. based agencies, which is what I am and Me all too. my peers are. You're Same. going to pay a lot more yep. and you're going to get a lot more. Right. hundred percent. Yep. And then there's a third thing that I just call the unicorn, which is somebody <laughs> who's sitting at their dining room table right now in Kansas City. They work for themselves. They'd be perfect. They have that high level of business acumen. They'd be an awesome fit for you. And you have to go find them. Yeah, that is a unicorn, right? And that's a that's definitely a one off and it's not really sustainable. Can they be replaced? <laughs> you know, is there a source where if uh, if Sally Kansas dining table went and left, you know, how do you replace that? So that there's a little bit of a risk with that, too. And I will say to your point, you know, off offloading your social media services out of the country, if you're an American or U.S. based business, 
not always the best results there, but you would save a ton of money. And because of my experience with that, every everybody at my agency, that, that's what we do, uh, social media and uh, digital marketing for the interior design industry is U.S. based trial and error. Been there, done that. <laughs> right. So, and, and you are right. It is more expensive, but you do get what you pay for, for sure. So what are some of the tasks, some of the low hanging fruit that we're looking at if we're going to hire someone virtual? And where's the, what do you recommend for a line of differentiation from, okay, maybe uh, out of the country would be good for these tasks, but you know what? I need a little bit more help. Maybe it's time to consider getting U.S. based virtual executive assistance, or maybe there isn't even a differentiator there. Maybe it's just finding the right one. Maybe. I mean, I, mm -hmm. what I know from overseas experience is the people. And so I'm, I'm, I'm tainted, not just because I own a U.S. base, but I'm tainted also because who comes to us are the people who tried it and then it didn't work. Yeah. So then they come to us and go, okay, I tried that. I want somebody here in the U.S. So who's not coming to me are the people who have had a great experience. You know, mm -hmm. I've had two VAs in the Philippines and they're awesome. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. I don't, I, it's hard for me to say exactly what would be great, but we do differentiate between do you need a task doer or do you want a shoulder to shoulder, more business partner type person who's going to collaborate with you and think oh, wow. with okay. you and go, OK, yeah. And yeah, they're going to update your CRM and, you know, manage the calendar and your inbox, but also are invested in, OK, what are we going to do for the next quarter to achieve your goals? OK, I'll oversee this. I'll take this. You take that. OK, let's huddle again every Friday. It's a it's a higher level of business acumen that you could get and you could get it just part time. Wow, really? Yeah. And that is that considered an executive assistant then? Is that under their scope? That's what I would say. I mean, the oh, reason okay. I opened what I opened is I want people to have that caliber of an executive assistant like somebody's got on the 40th floor of the downtown high rise. Okay. But you only need them maybe 10 hours a week. Hmm. But you want somebody who can do critical thinking, who can start the research on the like, oh, God, we got to turn our payroll over to some other software. <laughs> I don't even want to get into it. OK, could you get into that? OK, good. <laughs> could you think with me about this new payroll system? Oh, we're going to move over to Asana. OK, can you think through this with me? That's mm -hmm. not the highest and best use of me. Yeah. So the whole point is, what's the highest and best use of you? Okay, good. Now let's get rid of the rest of it. And whether you call that an executive assistant or a VA, mm -hmm. it's it's tough to find the line. But I think an executive assistant is somebody who's really able to do good thinking with you. I'll be honest. I didn't really know that executive virtual assistants or virtual executive assistants existed to that level. Maybe I'm just being uh, closed minded there because, I mean, I hire my my company is all virtual. They're all W-2 employees. They're all. And so we do work on that level. And I think with but to have someone who's not a business coach or a CFO or someone, but actually an, a, a virtual executive assistant thinking and working on the business. That's never really occurred to me. Yeah, so, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And it's something that comes over time. Now, they're never. Uh, yeah. but never, but I don't think they're ever, I would, I don't expect my crew to be an expert in your industry, but sure. I do expect them to be an expert in what it is to partner and look to see with you strategically, what should I be at work on this quarter versus mm -hmm. just what are the three tasks I need to get done by Thursday? And they should get the three tasks done by Thursday <laughs> and be able to look in the long term called, okay, by the end of the year, we're going to come up with a new XYZ system and I, I'm going to spearhead that. Yeah, I, I love it. You're you're opening up a whole my my brain is firing with hmm, what can I do here? <laughs> so talk to yeah. us about some things that we need to be looking for in order to find a virtual executive assistant that can rise to this level of partnership or collaboration or service or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of people that have some great EA experience, executive assistant experience, mm -hmm. they were on the 40th floor of the downtown high rise Okay, at some point. I they see. left for whatever reasons, go have children, go do whatever. I don't like that corporate culture. And now I'm out. I mean, the quality of the resumes coming in the door for us right now is kind of blowing us away. Because mm -hmm. I would have told you five years ago, I don't need you to have had EA experience. We're going to develop you. Yeah, You know, we'll turn you into that. So, you know, I think that Everybody could just start with by making a list of what are 
the repeatable things that you would delegate, that you could delegate? What are the projects you have on your mind to do? And if you were interviewing somebody, I'd start to ask them about that. You know, listen, what if I gave you this? That's part of what we do in our screening process. We have people have to do real world Mm -hmm. exercises. So I'm always a fan of that. Do you think that you're seeing healthier CVs coming to your agency because people are so used to working from home and now corporations are come back to the office three, four, five days a week. And they're like, nope, <laughs> I think I'm going to be okay working from home. Let me keep working virtually. I do think so. Yeah, I do think so. And all the tech layoffs and just everything that's happened in society in the last three years is have everybody question everything. Wait, I don't, I, but I was that way before the pandemic. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to sit on the freeway for an hour <laughs> yeah, and get all dolled up for whatever freaking meeting when I could just be at home in my sweatpants and unload the dishwasher and get ready for a call and what I could produce in the amount of time people sit on the freeway is ridiculous. It's not a lifestyle I could go back to. Nope. Actually, I mean, I wore a uniform every day because I was a cop, but still to have actually having to go and go to work. I love being able to just sit here in pajama pants and do a podcast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and we're seeing the same thing here at Wingnut Social. Like uh, when we're hiring new social media managers, I have people with their MBAs and, you know, coming in for social media managers who just they're tired of they don't want to go into an office. They just want to, you know, they're accountable that everything gets done on time. They're good people and they just don't they just want to work from home. And I don't blame them. It's a terrific lifestyle. So boost on there. Okay. So Gina, let's talk a little bit more about security. So say I'm hiring a virtual executive assistant and I have a lot of stuff like emails and Google Drive, and there's probably some password access and stuff they need to know. And, but you know, it's, I'm a little nervous about being vulnerable in that way and sharing some of these, these, these things with someone that I've never met before, or, or that's not even an employee. How do I make that a safe experience for, for me and my company? Good. And that that's a great answer to part of your last question, which is I would <laughs> ask about that, right? What what are people doing? Right. Yeah. So we everybody on our team, for example, has password managers, you know, mm -hmm. and they use things like LastPass, where sure. you're not actually giving your password, right? You're giving them access to get in. Um, you know, two factor authentication is important. I think. And I would, you know, frankly, I would start a little slow, right? I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily hand over the company credit card information <laughs> and my mother's maiden name and the last four digits of my social security number, <laughs> you know, but yeah. start slow. But you do want to mm -hmm. make sure that they ask those questions. Are they uh, using the software that would is designed for that exact purpose? And that software is getting better and better and can hold more than just, you know, here's a username and a password. But, oh, here's right. the highly confidential file that goes with that or what right. have you. And it's a it's a very good question. And and what's there? You know, all of our crew has got professional liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good thing to ask. You know, errors and omissions insurance. You know, sorry, mm -hmm. I booked you to Moscow, Idaho instead of Moscow, Russia. Hope you get the deal. I don't know. but <laughs> That could be a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whoops. I was like, oh, I got to like maybe adjust that example. <laughs> <laughs> and we use here at Wingnet, we use Zoho. Zoho yes. Vault. Yes. Yeah, which is another to just keep passwords and everything safe. So um, we we just turned over to that. When we started getting so many clients and so many employees, I was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. let's be smart here. Let's be smart here, Darla. So if you guys have a lot of employees out there, and you're not using a, a password protected thing and two factor and all that. So that's something you want to want to take into account. All right. So, Gina, let's talk. Let's get down to the dollars. Let's talk in terms of investment. What should we be budgeting to get a quality virtual assistant? Yeah. For our business. Yeah. I'll just tell you flat out what we charge is $50, oh, okay. $50 an hour. All right. So that's not inexpensive. That gives you a benchmark. And okay. I would say where we are in the range, like if you went out, which we are currently secret shopping now again for the first time in like four years to go figure out what the range is out there. Okay. We we definitely are in the upper echelon. I don't mm -hmm. think we're the most expensive, but we're pretty close. Yeah. So it's definitely a top shelf product. And right on the website, it says high caliber, part-time yeah. executive assistant. So we have to live up to that. And we have a yeah. lot of systems to do that. Um, so we have a lot of reasons we charge $50 an hour, but I think you, you would find anywhere between 35 and 55 an hour. Then you've got agencies that'll do like a monthly package mm -hmm. and you can work out whatever that is. 
hourly. Right. Um, I think one of the toughest questions I got asked, which I'll just give to your listeners because I it threw me back on my heels and I was like, that was a really good question, <laughs> which okay. is somebody asked me what we pay our people. Oh, okay. Now I could have said, I'm not going to tell you that. Sure. But I thought it was a smart question because if you're going to have somebody do tasks for you, that's one thing, fine. But if you're going to have somebody maybe eventually be you mm -hmm. and interact with your clients and you want them to send really, you know, appropriate and great emails and texts, and then somebody says to you, I'm paying them $13 an hour, you might go, ooh, whoever that person is may not be. Mm -hmm. At the Work, level yeah. at which I'm looking for, or right. you might go, okay, that's, that's fine. Cause all I want them to do is update my CRM and file things away in Dropbox. Right. So you can think about both. What are you going to pay? I, I think is the most important thing. Cause again, if you're being used for your highest and best use and you're keeping yourself focused on the $200 an hour work you're doing, yeah, then that makes, you know, obviously the $50 an hour, if you're getting lost and not really doing your $200 an hour work throughout the day, then $50 <laughs> an hour is going to eat away at you. <laughs> and you know, that's true. And you absolutely 100% do get what you pay for, uh, without a doubt. And I can, I can tell you right now, um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the, the peers that had the virtual assistants <laughs> that they weren't happy with, were not, were not uh, paying that. <laughs> yeah. so right. it yeah at this kind of level you do get what you pay for and it's like if you heard the term you only cry once right you you pay you you get the good stuff they do the work and maybe 10 15 20 hours a week and they do it well and you grow your business instead of going through trying to save some money and getting something inexpensive not working out right you spent that money you've wasted that money and now you have to come back full circle and do it right all over again and we've all been there we've all been there we've seen our design clients do that to us <laughs> you know as rookie designers and then circling all the way back coming to us to have it done right yep. you know at, at some point so that is just the way it goes and i have not I, i've had my agency digital marketing agency and there's a lot of agencies outsource they do they white label stuff we don't we do everything in house but that we did that because we learned that offering us based services for us you know marketing for interior designers in us and canada has been the best you know and we're not the lowest, we're not the highest, but we are in the upper, upper echelon as well. So I understand that value for the, for the money. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for being transparent. Okay, so let's get down to one of the last the barriers <laughs> sometimes for some of us as creatives and business owners. We can tend to be a little control freaky and delegating, right, can be a little bit of a challenge for us. And when we're like, oh, if I want anything done right, I'll just do it myself. Let me get in there and I'll do the thing. How do we let that go? And why is it in our best interest to do so as business owners? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make, I'll make the question even worse for myself. It's <laughs> like, because you're right, you can do it better. You can mm -hmm. do it faster and you wouldn't have to pay anybody. So yeah. that's a real conundrum. So then right, maybe thanks, you folks. say- Thanks for tuning in. Exactly. <laughs> 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 so then let's say you say to yourself, all right, I'm going to muster the whatever to work with this person. Oh my God, now I got to spend all this time to explain it all to somebody. Yeah. Yep, you do. So here's what I would say to everybody is you're investing in who you're going to get to be three months from now and six months from now. And the sooner you start investing, the sooner you're going to get rid of and off your plate, the things that are not the highest and best use of you. You know, you you want to be like the surgeon. You want to walk into that operating room, do surgery and walk out and yeah. you don't do anything else. You're not the cleaner. You're not the patient advocate. You're not the this. You're not even the one who puts your freaking outfit on that as you do surgery, you stand there and somebody takes it all off of you and you scrub out and you say whatever to the family and you go get in your high end car and go golf. I mean, that's, <laughs> That's what we all kind of want to do. <laughs> yes. Or in my case, go play pickleball or whatever. Yes, you're so, speaking my language. I love it. Yeah, but that is the why, because you're right. And what I, I like to be just really straight with people, in the beginning, it's not going to be relief. It's an investment. Mm -hmm. Because they're in three months, even in two weeks, they're not going to have to ask you again, 
Do you prefer aisle or window, first class or coach? Can you give me your mileage plan numbers? What, you know, all that stuff. You're not going to have to go. I can now say to my EA, all right, it's time for me to go see my mom again. Here's when I want to leave. Here's when I want to return. And she already knows what flight. She knows which class. She knows the whole thing. But that's because in the beginning, I invested and gave her it and went really slow. But now I'm just like, do it. And she does it. That sounds like heaven. <laughs> my big, the biggest bane of my existence, and I'm still in this mindset that I have to do it all. And you're right. It is that training and everything is the emails. Is I get I can't tell you how many emails I get a day and going and answering them and putting them to the right template responses and stuff. It just drives me crazy. If I could get rid of just that. It's, it's almost <laughs> like Facebook, people's inbox. They just go mm -hmm. there and then they're lost. They're lost <laughs> yes. forever. And it's like, did your calendar say spend an hour cleaning out your inbox? And a good EA will do what we call triage, inbox triage. Yeah. And they get all that stuff sorted into these folders. So what you're looking at is for you. What's either left in that inbox or you go to the Darla folder and don't you dare mm -hmm. go anywhere else. Go to the Darla <laughs> folder and spend your next hour dealing with items that need you. They need your brain, your creativity, your thinking. Because 80% of those emails probably are not demanding the highest and best use of you. 95% <laughs> are not, but here I am. And I'm like hooked to it. It's like I'm checking them so often. So just even I that, know. not much less the high level stuff, but just that I think would just make my life so much more enjoyable. I, I love it. Thank you for that, Gina. Gina, is there anything I've forgotten to ask you on this topic that you think the audience needs to hear before we get into the fire round? Um. No, there's so much I could talk about. So probably better I should just say no. <laughs> All righty. Now, Gina Cotner, I have to ask you, are you ready for the What Up Wingnut round? I am. <laughs> what would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Uh, hashtag impacted thousands. Nice. You're stuck on a deserted island, but you can have your one favorite food forever. What is it? Tiramisu. Oh, that's a nice choice. I love it. And last but not least, please recommend a book that's impacted you either personally or professionally. Uh, what had me jump and leave corporate America was a book called Cashflow Quadrant. And it was, uh, I'm now realize it's 25 years old now, Robert Kiyosaki. It was oh, the book yeah. that came after Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, and it's him. about the different quadrants of cash flow, being an employee, being self-employed, being a business owner. And one of the last chapters is entitled Make Disappointment Your Strength. And once I realized, oh, as an entrepreneur, I'm going to be disappointed sometimes. OK, I can handle that. I'm ready to jump. You know, I, I used to read his books back in the day, the real estate books and stuff. And that's when I have not picked up. I'm going to I'm going to pick it up on my Audible and take a listen to it. That sounds like uh, perfect timing. I'd like to listen. Gina Cotner, thank you so much for joining us. Please tell the Wingnuts where they can go to find out more about you and Athena Virtual Executive Assistance. And we will call it a day. Cool. All right. We well, can go to our website, which is AthenaExecutiveServices.com. And you can learn all about the services. And if you click on the learn more button, it's going to take you to a woman named Jennifer Tracy and she'll uh, answer whatever questions you have. She'll even brainstorm with you if you want. If you want to find me personally, you can just go out to LinkedIn and send me a message and I'll respond there for sure. All right. Thank you so much. A lot of food for thought here. I'm going to dig back into the uh, virtual executive assistant realm now that I have something, uh, a different angle to think about it and see, see where I can put that to use. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Darla. All right, guys. So a lot of food for thought in going through and determining if this is a fit for you and what level do you need? Do you need the Gina Kotner, Athena virtual executive assistant level of executive assistant? I might. I might need that at my level and my business and what I'm looking for. You might not. You might be a beginning business owner and just getting ready to delegate. Maybe you don't need quite that level. I do hope that Gina was helpful in answering questions from everywhere from budget range to expectations, fulfillment, and the level of virtual executive assistant that you can expect and how to look for them. And if you're in the market, check out Athena Executive Services dot com and uh, hit up Gina and see what, what she has going on there and see how they can help you with your business. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in to Designed by Wingnut Social on our YouTube channel, where you can see us in all of our glory and all the magnificence that is the Wingnut Social podcast. 
<laughs> you don't want to miss that. That's designed by Wingnut Social on YouTube. And thanks for checking in. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever the hell you're listening to the show on. Tell your friends what the hell. Tell your enemies about the show. And uh, remember, until next time, to get out there, get uncomfortable, and be great. One of the biggest impacts I had on my business was reading a book by um, Gay Hendricks. Um, what's, called, what's the name of the book now? I'm having a menopause moment. Hold on one second. What is the name of the book? Oh, my God. I'm having a total menopause Alzheimer moment. Well, okay. We won't forget the... Okay. For sure. And I had another question there and I just totally blinked out. Man, menopause is kicking my today. What was it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it time for you to hire? Fun fact, my fiance's favorite reptile animal is a frog.